Awesome. Welcome everyone to the AWE Cal Day event. AWE stands for the Association of Women in EENCS. However, we include women and non-binary folks in our definition of that. So today we were gonna start with an intro activity and then we're gonna go into our panel and breakout rooms in the end. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat um, and we'll do our best to answer them. Also, I want to preface this event by saying that we only represent our own perspectives. We'll try to give you the most comprehensive answer and the most diverse set of answers we can provide, but take everything someone says to you with a grain of salt because it's only their perspective, right? Just because I think a class is hard doesn't mean that you think a class is hard, um, things like that. All right, but we're so happy to have you here. And with that, I'm going to pass it on to Sushrika to lead our interactivity. Hey, everyone, we're really excited to have all of you here. So please join the Slido here. You can just go to slido.com and then put in the question. Uh, I'll give you guys a minute to do that. And then we're going to go ahead and do some intro questions so you guys can get to know each other. Yeah. OK, so here's our first question. So where are you from? Like anywhere, city, state would be great. If you're an international student, we'd love to see that because there's definitely some other international students who also might be here in this panel. You can come and meet them. So, yeah. And then just go ahead and um, let me unlock the voting. Okay, go ahead and put in uh, where you're from in the Slido link and you should be able to see. Oh, a lot of Bay Area people, that's great. <laughs> A lot of people from SoCal too. That's nice. My Fremont gang. Yep. <laughs> All right. We can go ahead and move on to our second question then. Um, and then I'm going to hand that over to Bridget, who's our co host here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Our second question will be on the quiz. So on the Slido, it will click join the quiz. You click join and that will and you'll, that will take you to your first question, which is what is your intended major? And click send and we'll display the results after. Let's go ahead and see what the results are. Yeah, you can see like a different amount of people are in each major. So it's great to find a community here in awe, especially through all of these majors. All right, let's go to our next question, which is what is Berkeley's math slot? You can select multiple choices for this answer. Emojis are a hint for Vina, so it's okay. All right, so I'm glad to see a lot of you guys got it. OSCE is also a valid option. We really support all puns here, as you'll come to see. And yeah. So the next question is How many people are in the OSCE Slack in the largest channel? If you don't know, all Association of Women in Eeks has a huge Slack that's super active all the time. And if you join the club, you'll be able to join. And the Slack just has so many resources. So how many people are in these channels?
Slack is an app where you can connect with people in different clubs or classes, and it has channels um, that are like themed, <laughs> and you basically anyone can post in them. Yes, professional Discord, like. Jenny, that's a really good answer, professional Discord, except no voice channels. What's Discord? Non-professional Slack. <laughs> nice. I think those are really close, yeah. So we have 800-ish people. I think it was like 750, 775 last time we checked. So yeah. Our next question, how many officers are there? So some of our panelists will also be officers. You can mute them too. See our results. Yeah, those are pretty close. 14. <laughs> Elections for officers happen in December, and even there's many, like quite a few freshmen on the officer team. So that could be a potential thing for you guys to do if you come to Berkeley. The next question is How can you get more involved in awe? Wow, you guys got all of them, yep. So we can quickly go over them to a mentorship. You can basically find a mentor, an upperclassman, usually if you're an underclassman, uh, joining committee. Basically, that's what me and Bridget are actually part of. Basically a way to meet with officers and help out in different departments, socials, the Slack, company tea times. Those are just all great ways to meet other all members and attend events. And then office hours and accountability hours are just another way to meet officers and then also to get your work done in the second one, yeah. And very controversial. Your favorite genre of music. Oh yeah, quick thing. If you're sending questions to the Slido, please switch your questions over to the Zoom chat. Also, we'll be able to get into more specific questions in breakout rooms. So just hang tight and then we'll be able to answer those then. All right, and then our results. A lot of pop bands, nice. And I'm sorry to our country people, but yeah. <laughs> All right, nice job, Emily. So we have a type kind of answer where you can type um, what are you most looking forward to, to Berkeley or 
coming to college in general. And we get to see all your answers live. Oh yes, the food. <laughs> For those saying community or meeting new people or friends, well, you're already doing great by attending this event. I just want to say that. <laughs> Better than Stanford, right? I'm gonna go ahead and block voting and then we'll go on to the next question. All right, so if you've noticed very discreetly throughout this presentation, we've had a bunch of all puns. So OSCE, awesome, officers, go ahead and just give us as many all puns as you can, or you just repeat your favorite one if you can't think of any right now. Auto tune. I've never heard that one before. <gasps> Hot. Wow. 10 out of 10. Thank you. New favorite compliment. Oh, mangas. Oh, my God. <laughs> So that's the end of our um, icebreaker. We're gonna go ahead and go and do some intro slides now. Uh, thank you all for participating and yeah. So our intro slides are going to be presented by our AWE president, Trevina Tan. Hello, hello. Thank you, Bridget and Satrika for the Slido icebreaker. I hope y'all enjoyed and I hope you guys got to see a little bit sneak peek of off. Um, but to kind of introduce ourselves to you guys, um, we are the Association of Women in E and CS. We're here to empower non-binary folks, women folks, and other underrepresented minorities in tech who are interested in tech, basically. Next slide, please. Um, and yeah, so as you might have seen from the Slido, we have a lot of things going on throughout the year. And so our main mission is to build a strong community, but also to empower everyone um, in multiple areas of college life. So we have social events where you guys can get to know each other and make new friends. We have company events where you guys can get to know a company and um, kind of see how their recruiting looks like and ask recruiters what they're looking for and maybe an intern or full-time grad. We also have technical events where you can pick up a new skill. Um, so many of those, you can pick up so many different skills and they're all different every semester. And we also have so much academic support in the form of study sessions, accountability hours where we just study together um, with like lo-fi music. And we also have a popping slack as you probably know already where you can find tons of people who are in the same class as you and maybe find that next homework partner or project partner. So yeah, we also have so many opportunities for our members, we publicize them through our Slack and weekly newsletters, which you will be a part of once you are a member. Um, and these opportunities are things that um, 
we received into our inbox and then we share with you guys. So it's a great stop, one-stop shop for things that you might want to pursue in the future. And if I wasn't, um, if I didn't mention already, AWE is completely free to join. There is no interview process or selection process. All you need to do is fill out a simple membership form so we know who you are and then you're on your way. Um, so yeah. Next slide, please. So we have a bunch of fun events, both online and in person. So some of our fun socials include a lot of things like crafts and making different things. So on the left side, we have a succulent building social. Um, and on the right side, we had an ice skating social. And then we also have a mentorship program, which is kind of like a big sister, little sister type of vibe where as an underclassman, you can get a mentor who is an upperclassman um, and you will be them you will be with them for the whole semester. And it is a great opportunity to have like an upperclassman friend. You can ask for about advice, about what classes to take or about life things and like what to eat, um, but it's great. And we always have a lot of mentorship families and we have socials that are specific to mentorship and it's a good time overall. And we also have technical workshops on the right. You can see that we have a picture from one of our previous ones about web design and development. Um, and every semester we have so many of these and we have different topics such as machine learning, product management, artificial intelligence, and it's a great way to dip your toes into something and get to know about a subject of interest without needing to like full commit. And we always have great collaborations with other clubs to kind of bring you these workshops. Um, and if there's anything that you wanted to see in particular, you can always input um, at the beginning of the semester and we'll do our best to bring it to you. And continuing off of that, we also have a lot of other company events. So break times is what we call our company sponsored events. Um, they have been renamed to Tea Times for online. And this is basically an event where representatives from that company come to talk about their company, talk about what services or products they provide, and also talk about what it's like to be an engineer there, um, as well as what it's like to interview there and what they're looking for in a person. Um, these are great because it's basically like a lunch that you get to have for free with the representatives from the company um, and they bring goodies all the time, such as on the left, we have plushies. Um, and then on the right, we have a Roblox event where they raffled off. I mean, yeah, they raffled off a bunch of like cool things like a Polaroid t-shirts, things like that. And on the bottom right, you can see that we're having like good lunch. There's always good food. Highly recommend. Um, it's a great way to get to know what type of companies are out there and kind of refine what company that you want to um, join if you are looking to join one. And obviously with the pandemic, we have transitioned to online events, um, which also means that we can do some cool new things that we haven't done before, such as movie screenings where we all get together in a Zoom room um, and we like watching movies or like documentaries about important things. And the best part is that we have a running Zoom chat where we can discuss among ourselves. So the left picture is from a screening of Coded Bias, which details um, discrimination and bias in tech and how certain algorithms um, are subtly programmed to discriminate against certain populations and demographics. And we had a great discussion afterwards. And I would highly encourage you guys to join because these are some of the really important conversations that we're happy to start with our community. And on the right side, we had a bullet journaling workshop. Um, this is where we learned how to create a spread, what constitutes a spread. And then we all went into breakout rooms and made our own spread and took pictures. So a lot of our events are online are similar to this where we have um, together time like in a main room and then we go into breakout rooms, get to know people in our breakout rooms and try the activity out for ourselves. It's always super fun um, and yeah, honestly, the best thing that has gotten me through the pandemic. And we also have Gather. So if you do not know, Gather is kind of like this virtual world setting where you can go in as like a little avatar. Um, it's so cute, makes me feel like I'm a Pokemon. And we also have some events on Gather. So for our mentorship program, we have events on Gather where you can like meet up with your mentors and your mentees. Um, we also have alumni events on Gather and it's just a great time. It's so cute. And yeah. So Zoom is not the only platform that we host our events on, we do gather as well. And 
like I said earlier, we'd like to do a lot of crafts things. So we had a friendship bracelet social recently, as well as a birdhouse painting social where we mail you the supplies um, free of charge, obviously. So we mail you like the lanyards for the friendship bracelets and you make them with your breakout rooms or we mail you a birdhouse with a painting kit and you can choose what design to make your birdhouse. And it's a great time and it's great for de-stressing and getting your mind off of work, especially for, um, you know, when you're in the same room for both work and sleep, it's a great break. And with socials, we also have some technical events, such as we had a computer vision workshop with machine, machine learning at Berkeley. We had an identity and tech panel where we heard from a lot of well-established professional women in the industry and kind of how they shaped their identity in computer science and engineering and what their journey was like. So it was really uplifting and inspiring to hear from those. And we are always on the lookout to bring these kind of like exploration opportunities for you guys to come to so you can hear about the stories of other people in the industry. And on the bottom right, we also have a tea time, which I described earlier is basically a talk with company representatives. And yeah, so if you're interested, there are plenty of ways to stay in touch and to follow what we're doing. So the first and foremost thing for you guys is the all omitted um, CS Facebook group, sorry, it's a mouthful. Um, and this is a Facebook group where you can meet all the other admits for this year and also meet some of the officers and committee members that we have. Um, you guys can get to know each other right away. We're posting on there all the time. Um, and yeah, we will always post any upcoming opportunities for you guys into the Facebook group. So I highly encourage you join. Um, we are also on Instagram and Medium if you wanna check us out there and you can kind of get a feel of what our past events have been like. But also we have our website, which is aw.berkeley.edu. This is where you go to become a member um, if you decide to commit to Berkeley. And this is where the membership form is. And it's also where you can explore some of our other um, pictures and things like that to see what we do. And if you would like to click on these links, um, you can visit the slide deck at tinyurl.com slash aw-calday-2021. Um, these are all clickable and yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Madam President Trevina. All right, give everyone a second to click on links or save links if they need to. And in the meantime, can all panelists pin themselves? I mean, sorry, spotlight yourselves. And if you're not a panelist, unspotlight yourself. And pro tip, to see all the panelists plus me, the MC, you can use speaker view. If you use gallery view, you'll just see everyone, which is totally fine too. All righty, I'll take over now. So Sashrika, you can stop sharing the screen and we'll move into the panel. So we got a lot of questions from y'all um, and we're just gonna answer some of the most commonly asked questions. And of course you can ask any relevant follow-ups in the chat and we have a lot of chat monitors here that will answer those questions if they are relevant and also we have the breakout room afterwards. All right, so let's get started. The most commonly asked question is, what is the main difference between the majors, College of Engineering, EECS, and LNS, CS? And our ex-president, Kara Wolf, will be answering that for us. Kara? Yeah, that's a great question. So the biggest difference is that because they're in two different colleges, if you're admitted for EECS, you're already declared when you come in versus if you're admitted for intended CS or you want to declare CS, uh, there's three classes you need to declare once you're here. Um, and there's a slight difference in some of the general education requirements, but for the most part, you can choose whatever if you want to specialize CS or EE, it's all up to you because the majors are pretty much the same and they're viewed as pretty much the same from anyone recruiting or anyone beyond Berkeley. And you might hear us refer to EECS or CS in this panel and we really mean just the general, everyone here, it doesn't matter what major. Thanks, Kara. All right, second question. Oh, and that was asked by um, Ipsita. I'm gonna try to shout out people who asked questions in the panel. All right, so the next question from Ashley Cow and Claire Koo. Why did you choose Berkeley over other programs? And what makes Berkeley so special? Emily S. All right, yeah, that's a really good question. So I guess I like to preface, I'm like an international student. And I think one of the biggest reasons why I chose Berkeley was just it's like proximity to like 
Silicon Valley and like the whole tech scene over there. Um, and I think that like throughout like the entire Bay Area, there's like a really great culture of like constantly like innovation and like constantly like doing new things, doing the best things. So I thought that like that um, energy really kind of spreads to campus. And I think everyone is definitely like super passionate about what they do. And we're also always trying to constantly innovate. So I think that's like one of my favorite things I've like realized since coming to Berkeley is just being surrounded by people who are so like genuinely passionate about what they do, whether that's like CS related or not. Um, and I think, yeah, there's just really a great community of both like peers and professors to learn from. Yeah, thanks Emily. And Ruby? Yeah, um, definitely like echo what she said, but I think a little bit also just when it has to do with location. I love that we're so close to a city, but we're also really close to a lot of mountains and hills. There's people going to Tahoe on the weekends, people going in the city. Um, I think like when you're picking colleges, you really want to consider where you're going to be living for the next four years. And it's just such a great place to be. You're never really bored and you can find whatever you're into. I think also just the size of the school is something I really like because there's just so many different opportunities. Um, there's a lot of different like clubs and different ways to meet people um, and you wouldn't get that same experience at a smaller school. Awesome, thank you all. All right, and our third question from Yasmin Garcia Maldana Do, Ratika Marugesh and Sarah Sweet. How did you realize you wanted to do engineering or why did you enjoy it? Why do you enjoy engineering? Sophia. Sure, so growing up, I always liked math, but I thought I wanted to be a music teacher. But then in high school, I realized I didn't want to be a teacher. <laughs> um, I also wanted a more financially stable career than music. So I thought about majoring in math, but I didn't really like that there wasn't like a direct path between like math and like another career besides math, uh, being a math teacher. So at this point, I was also learning about computer science and my friend suggested that I apply to the Girls Who Code Summer Immersion Program. So through that program, I learned like, I actually do like computer science and then that's how I decided I wanted to major in computer science. And then throughout like my first and second year of college, I kind of uh, thought that I might major in economics or math, but I just stuck with computer science because I liked it and also because of its versatility. Like you can go into so many industries with it like financial tech or even biology, like there's so many different routes to take. Awesome. Actually, Sophia, could you talk a little bit more about the Girls Who Code experience you had? Oh yeah, sure. So that's like, I'm pretty sure they changed it now, but this was like the summer after my junior year and like the summer before I started college because I skipped my senior year of high school. But basically it was like an intro to like HTML, intro to, I think, Python, uh, JavaScript, just like very bare bones, just like giving people a taste of computer science. So that you know there's different programs you can do throughout the summer at Berkeley and also of course different colleges that can give you like a taste of computer science, see if it's right fit for you. Awesome, thank you. And also Ruby, how did you realize you wanted to do engineering? Yeah, um, I think I kind of came in. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I just kind of wanted to get something technical because I like math and science. Um, and CS ended up being like a really good um, major for that. Just I think it like has given me like a really good foundation to like figure out what I want to do like career wise. Um, it, I'm a junior now and like I don't think it was until this year that I actually started enjoying engineering and like kind of deciding I want to go to software engineering. But I just think there's something like really fun about programming and it's kind of different than other majors where like you really have to be creative you really have to I get challenged I'm like challenged in my work every day um and it's like a lot more of like doing stuff rather than like reading and studying and like memorizing things um so I think it's like a very like stimulating like career path and major um so that's pretty much it I totally agree all right thank you both and to our next question question four and this is from a lot of people, including uh, Ashley Cow again, Rebecca Dang, Diana Poplesnail. Um, what is the EECS culture like? Before we answer this, I want to preface again by saying that this is our own personal experience. The school is so huge. Um, but to answer the question, Bridget, why don't you talk a little bit? And also, could you introduce what year you are in, kind of how you got into EECS? 
Yeah, so X culture, I think, is fun for me because I'm in awe and all my friends are in awe and they're all X majors, CS majors. So I always work with them and go to events with them. So that's like been my interaction with the X culture so far. But I would say that the X as a community is like full of people who are really passionate and good at CompSci. And it's also kind of resembles hustle culture a lot, not gonna lie. So that can be good in that um, it can help to motivate you, jumpstart your career, but it can also be bad in terms of you might get imposter syndrome because all of the amazing things that people in this community accomplish. And <clears throat> it can also like lead to yourself comparing yourself to others. Um, but other than that, I would say no one is going out of their way to actively sabotage you. And most people really want to help you. And finding a community like Oz is really important because friends will really make your experience way better. So I would really recommend, especially a woman, like joining something like Aw. Plus one to that. And I also want to say that um, I hear some people asking me about like what Reddit says about Eeks culture, and I want to caution against that. I think Reddit is a self-selective community of people, so it's a really like skewed voice, I would say. Um, in general, on Reddit, you'll find a lot more people who tend to be pessimistic and negative, in my experience. Um, so just caution against that. Uh, and I also want to say that Eeks is the largest, X and CS is the lar are the largest majors at Berkeley. And Berkeley is such a large school, which means it can be what you want to make it. Like if you don't wanna see someone, if you don't go out of your way to see them, you won't see them again on campus. Um, this also means that if you want to find a particular niche of people, you most likely will be able to find them. All right, question number five. Now we're going into being a woman in STEM at Cal. And for context, the EX major and the CS major on average are about 25% female. And practically, that means that in a average randomly selected study group of like four to five people, you may be probably the only female in that group. So that's just a little bit of context. Um, all right, so we're gonna ask three people to share their experience as a woman in STEM at Cal. And first up, our president, Trevina. Yes, hello. So being a woman in STEM at Cal is kind of like multifaceted. And like Michelle said, you may be the minority in some of your classes, in smaller group sections, you might be like one of the few girls. And so it's kind of a journey to um, venture through that um, kind of setting, because it's important to not feel like you are the only one and to not like pin yourself as like, okay, I must only talk to other girls, but also just to know that you are like as capable as anyone else in the room. I think that is the first thing of being a woman in STEM at Cal. Um, I think Berkeley in general is really good about accommodating everyone and being inclusive, but like occasionally you will come across the occasional like um, negative vibe, I, I would say. So I just wanted to say that don't let that get to you. Um, there is so much community within the women in tech at Cal. And so you can find so much support and I'm really grateful for the community. So I would say it's been an overall super positive experience because of all the other people here. Um, but with that being said, it's also really important to be pushing for like more diversity. And that's kind of something that all is striving to do as well. Thanks, Trevina. And Malika? Yeah, so kind of just echoing everything Trevina said about you know, there's a there's sometimes small things that can, you know, be not as fun to deal with as a woman in STEM. But overall, for me at least, it's been a super super positive experience. And I think a big reason for why that is is like the all community itself. So I'll give you guys like a couple of examples of why it is this semester. So everything's been mainly online. So a lot of what we do is through like a Slack channel, and Slack is like again like a professional Discord, and we have channels where you have like a positive channel, like good things that have happened to people where we hype each other up, even like a scream channel where we rant about things and like other people help us solve our problems or just, you know, agree with the rant sometimes. And I think having that community of people in person obviously will be really fun, but also um, even online is 
is just helpful when you're going through things as a woman in STEM at Cal. Yes, for sure. And last but not least, Kara Wolf. Yeah, I, again, I'm gonna echo what Trevina and Malika said and what Bridget said as well. I think like when I was a freshman, I was a little bit overwhelmed at first about being one of the only girls in, in study groups. Like I think we had one and they called it like the boys in Kara because I was the only one sometimes. Um, but I really came to rely on CS Kickstart and AWE which, um, to support, have this amazing community of women. And now as a senior, like I have felt so supported in my time here um, and also been able to like push for more change in the department. And that's something that's been really rewarding. Awesome, thank you. All right, and moving on to question seven. And this is from Elizabeth's son, Ashley Cow, killing it, <laughs> and Rebecca. How has Oz community helped you? I know we, some panelists already touched on this. We're gonna hear from some different voices as well, starting with Emily S. How has Oz community helped you? Yeah, I think definitely all has been one of like the best like communities I found at Berkeley so far. Um, and again, kind of going back to the whole like international student thing, a lot of um, like international students come to Berkeley not knowing too many people, just like people from like their city, their country. Um, and I think that was like the situation for me. I think I knew maybe like three people coming into Berkeley. Um, and I think like right from like the first day of school, I think all has been like a really, really awesome community for finding friends and building those like really, really like lifelong friendships. Um, and I think it's also been like really good to um, kind of meet people through um, like all events, like tea times, um, things like socials. So I guess I would overall say just kind of awe has been like a really great place to like make really long lasting friendships and also like meet people who are in the same major. Yeah. All right. And Trevina. Um, yes. So I joined uh, my freshman year and from there it has been such a journey. Um, like you probably will find the same sentiment around the AWE panel, but AWE is honestly such a life-changing uh, group and community to be a part of at Berkeley because you have so many amazing women who are pursuing tech and you will basically have someone to reach out to whether you need like course advice or if you want like a project partner or if you're applying to a company and you're like not sure um, about what the process is. We have so many people who are just like willing to help and we have so many fun events, meaning that you get to meet a lot of these people all the time. Um, and also all leadership is so fun to be in and planning these events is very rewarding. So definitely has shaped my Cal experience significantly. Me too, thanks Sharina. Um, and last but not least, Bridget. Yeah, all has really helped me, especially as a freshman um, who's never been to like Berkeley campus to go to college, it's been really helpful to make new friends. And especially like the first way I got involved in awe was through the mentorship program. And that was like a blessing. My, my mentor, like she's cool, she's all right, but she's like my best friend. And I just love my mentor so much. And like that relationship really helped me like make new relationships and like get farther in life. And also through all I met my future roommates and they're also like, I'm so grateful for them. I always do homework with them, always complain with them. And it's just been really great for my social life, which social life is so important, especially remotely when you feel so alone. So yeah. Yeah, I agree. Mentorship is great. Actually, Anya, if you can, can you say hi? Maybe through Rusi's video, because she's already swallowed it. <laughs> Hey, Bridget, FYI, everybody, I have the coolest mentee, and Bridget, I love you too. Oh, okay, bye. <laughs> All right, thank y'all. Okay. Now we're transitioning into the student experience at Cal, which I'm sure lots of y'all have many questions about. So the first one is, how would you describe student life slash culture at Cal? So this is different from the EX one. It's more so like Cal in general. And this was asked by Shreya Anand. Clara Ku and Tia Jan to help us answer that, Trevina. 
Okay, you guys, there is so much to do at Berkeley, like literally so much. There are so many clubs. I know we've been focusing on awe, but basically any hobby that you can think of, there's a club for it. Um, and if you have the privilege of coming to Cal Day in person, uh, maybe next year when you're already here or when you're like as a student, you can go to the Calapalooza event, which is, which is basically like a bunch of clubs. But if you want to pick up like any hobby, this is the time. Um, if you want to join like a dance team, we have literal dance teams that have like 700 people in them. Um, we have things for knitting. We have things for crocheting. We have things for like um, drumming. And it's such a time because all of these communities are super well supported and it's a great time to get into a lot of different interests and one thing great about Berkeley is that no one's ever really doing the same thing so when you meet someone new they're going to be in like different hobbies different clubs different interest groups and you're going to find out more about these things through them and so everyone is just kind of just like this ball of like a bunch of cool things um, so I would say student life is popping I totally agree. Actually, fun little activity. Um, all members that are here, put in the chat what other activities non eek slash CS related that you're involved in. I'll go first. Acapella. Give everyone a second to do that. Greek life, mock trial, dance, cal band, animated slash modeling, fashion, K, okay, which is Japanese American, right, Kara? Japanese American Student Union, lots of stuff. Awesome. And if you see anything, participants, that you uh, want to talk with the person more about, make sure to pin them down in the breakout rooms later. All right, continuing with our question of how would you describe student life and culture at Cal? We have Ruby. Yeah, um, I would definitely agree with Trevina. It is popping. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's a lot like what you make of it. I joined a, I've joined like a lot of like really random really different clubs and I'd say some are really great for like professional development or like exploring different parts of CS but then I'm also in clubs that have like not really hobbies like not really interests like I think I put in the chat like um I was in Greek life for like the past two years and like you live in a sorority like there's stuff like that um so I think it's like a really good mix of like joining clubs that you're really interested in to like help you like professionally academically but then also just like ways to have fun and meet people kind of outside of your social or your academic circles because I have a lot of friends that like aren't CS and like that's really great too um I think also I don't think anyone's talked about it but like there's a lot of school spirit here um our sports are okay but like people like going to games it's really fun on a normal year there's game days like there's basketball games cal gives you tickets to go to giants games in the city go to like uh musicals like there's like a lot of ways to like get out and like do things and like um do things that like aren't related to school um so i think that like freshman year yeah, you walk down sprawl people attack you with flyers to join their clubs and you should just take them even if you're not interested go check out a bunch of things shop around and it is so fun to do a bunch of things quit them just like do as much as you can because you never know like who you'll meet or what you'll end up really liking yeah i agree for the flyers just take them all right um next question is it safe to walk back to dorms after late night classes? All right, for this very important question, Rusi, help us out. Um, yeah, so when I came to Berkeley, my mom was very stressed. Um, she bought me like three different pepper sprays and she was like, be careful walking home. I lived in unit one, which is one block away from campus. Um, so I was like, mom, this is excessive, but I think it's actually really important. I walk around carrying pepper spray if I'm walking in the dark um, or try to walk with friends if you're walking in the dark, like try not to walk alone um, at night. But as long as you're with friends and you're kind of aware of your surroundings, uh, you will be okay and you will be safe. So yeah, stay vigilant, like keep your, keep your eyes open. Like don't do anything dumb. Don't just go on like midnight walks by yourself, but as long as you are aware of your surroundings and safe, you will be okay. And it's a, it's a great place to be, despite the fact that you're like kind of in a city where there are some characters, but yeah. Yeah, I would plus one to everything Rusi said. Right, question number 10. How much does dorm life affect the freshman experience and in what way? So for this question, 
Um, it's kind of funny. We're going to have some fresh, uh, freshman that actually does not live in the dorm offer her perspective as well. But first, Malika, dorm life. Yeah, so I uh, got to the dorms this semester. And I think it's funny because from what we usually hear, uh, freshmen have a dorm experience where you kind of just keep your dorm door open and people can walk in and walk out. But obviously because of COVID, like that's not the dorm experience I had. So it might be a little different for y'all, hopefully. Um, but for me, I think the biggest thing is like you find ways to socialize with people outdoors. So I like joke that like my prime social hours are like whenever there's sun and it's not freezing cold, which doesn't happen often because Berkeley weather is really good. Um, so yeah, I think it's definitely like spending more time outdoors. Um, occasionally like people have like dorm Zoom socials. So those are also offered. And I just want to also say that you're not really restricted to only talking to the people on your floor. So I have a couple of friends on my floor, but it's not like that's kind of like your lottery. You get who you get. Like you definitely can hang out with a lot of people like in other buildings, through clubs. Um, there's no like you, you can try out being with many different groups and see like what makes you happy. Thanks, Malika and Bridget. Yeah, I did not live in the dorms this year at all. I stayed at home all year and I still made plenty of friends and even have roommates for next year. So I would say um, even if you like don't vibe with anyone in your dorm or your roommate, it's fine. You can make friends in many other ways. And yeah, just don't feel like you're a failure because your dorm relationships didn't last. Yeah. All right. Thank y'all. All right. And into Zoom learning. Now, um, I think fall will be a hybrid model. So some of you will still be taking Zoom classes. Um, and I'll do a little activity about this past year for Zoom classes. Uh, the question is, how many Zoom lectures did you attend? Like what percentage of Zoom lectures did you attend? This is just to give the participants an idea. All right, panelists, let's be honest. Okay. If you attended 100% of your Zoom classes, raise your hand. I'm not raising my hand, okay. All right, 75%. Mm okay, you got two freshmen, one junior, all right. 50%. Okay, okay. 30%. <laughs> All right, no shame. 10%, one in 10. And a solid 0%. We got any 0%. We got Enya Shang in the background of Rusi's video. <laughs> All right. So, goes to show there are many different ways you can go about navigating Berkeley. There is no one right way. That is all I will say on this topic. All right. So the question is advice for staying on track with online school slash handling the transition into college on Zoom slash hybrid. And this is from Ashley Cow and Retika Marugush. And to answer this, we got Rusi up first. Yeah, so I think that especially in online semesters, it's important to kind of get yourself into a schedule. So I didn't really get a good schedule of, of watching lectures in the fall. And I think I ended up falling behind in some of my classes. So this semester I've been doing a lot better with like, even if classes are asynchronous and like recorded, if I can go to live lecture, I will still try to go to live lecture. So I go to live lectures like Tuesday and Thursday mornings at 9 a.m., even though that kind of sucks. But um, I think that just finding your own schedule that you can stick to every week is really helpful, both online and in person, honestly. Um, even, when, uh, even when classes were in person, a lot of CS classes that are like really large classes are still recorded. So you kind of still have the option of doing online school mostly like be beyond discussions. Um, so you can still like you can choose to go to live lecture or you can choose to watch online lecture most of the time. So I try to go to live lecture as often as I can to kind of keep me accountable. Um, and that seems to work for me, but I know that for some others it doesn't work as well and they prefer to watch online lectures. So just find what works best for you and kind of what system keeps you the most accountable um, to like get the most work done. Yeah. And Malika. 
I think, yeah, I, I think I agree with Rusi, at least for me, like for whichever classes have like synchronous lectures, let's say it's over Zoom, like just going for those um, helps you keep a schedule. Um, also, it's just a lot more fun to do work when you're not like playing catch up. I've definitely like been on both sides of it. But when you feel like you're somewhat on top of things and you're not like a week behind on lecture, which again is manageable, it happens all the time. But when you're not like that, it makes it a lot more fun to actually go to lecture. So yeah, try to maybe watch online or if, you, if you're watching it later, then um, maybe like set a schedule for yourself. That definitely helps. And then one more thing I would add is um, try to um, maybe like meet up with friends and set up like a Zoom study call. What I like to do is, uh, especially with a couple of people in awe, I like call them up, like set a time to talk and like we'll talk for like half an hour and then like work on stuff separately for an hour after that. And those are really fun. Yeah, I agree. And uh, another way to do the same thing of having a Zoom call with friends is our all accountability hours, which you will learn more about uh, when you join our Slack. All right, thank you all for that. And another big question we have is about housing. How does housing work over the four years of undergraduate study at Berkeley specifically? Trevina? Yeah, so for housing, um, if you are a freshman, you have the option to live in a dorm. Um, I'm not sure how it works for this upcoming semester, so please do check in with your um, like advisor and residential hall communications. But after freshman year, dorm housing is no longer as guaranteed. You can still apply for dorms. Um, you can also become an RA to get a free spot in a dorm, um, but you also have the option of off-campus housing well, off-campus university housing, which is basically university-owned apartments. So they kind of feel like dorms, but they're more of like a apartment style um, complex and they are a little further than dorms. But a lot of people do choose to live off-campus entirely where you look for an apartment on your own, um, maybe with friends um, and roommates and things like that. And for that process, you kind of just want to pinpoint which area you wanna live in, what budget, what your budget is. Um, and then go kind of apartment hunting until you find a place that you like. And so it is pretty common to be moving around quite a bit during college, for, such as like if you come out of the dorms and you live into an apartment your second year, but maybe you're not vibing with it, or maybe you want to move in with different people, it's completely normal to like switch again um, as many times as you'd like. So, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Sharina. All right, um, Sophia resources students can use to get help in their classes? Sure, so there's like a lot of different types of resources. The first that comes to mind is CSM or computer science mentors. It's like for all the intro CS classes and some EE ones, you can have like an additional discussion and it's as long as you sign up, which the signups go really, really fast. So you gotta make sure you're looking at your emails to sign up then you can go like once or twice a week and that's really good for additional help. There's also other uh, like free tutoring services. I think it's called CS370 uh, where you can get free tutoring. Um, and there, if you always check, there's something called Piazza where there's a lot of posts on like what resources are available. Then you can find like what resources there are for CS classes or just like other classes in general. So like as long as you are reading and like keeping on track of the email and also like I would say it helps uh, if like before you start any college like to look at the website and look at what resources are there that you might want that really helps rather than like learning all about it when you first get to college but prior is better. All right thanks Sophia. Um, and last but not least, what are your favorite parts of non-academic student life? Trevina? Um, so you guys probably heard from me earlier about how student life is popping, but when we are in person, um, some of my favorite things to do is AFX, which is a dance team on campus. There are about many dance teams and it's a great way to kind of just like channel your energy out and not focus on the same like subject area for the whole day. Um, I also really like like cool minor things you can do in college, like sit in a library, you know, you don't even need to be doing work, just like the vibes are good. Um, you can sit in library, you know, watch the Glade, um, 
you can get drinks or lunch with friends. It's such a college is like the prime time of getting close with people because you live within 20 minutes walk of all your friends, basically um, 20 minutes walk, 20 minutes bus, whatever. And so it's a great time to explore the area, um, take a nice walk outside, go up like the fire trails, um, go up the Campanile, you know, and there's so many nice spots around campus to just like relax and do work as well as so many spots outside of the city that you can go to such as like SF which is accessible by BART and so I would highly recommend exploring and making the most out of your college career because it's not just about academics and some of the most fun times I've had are definitely outside of the classroom so yes seek out fun yes totally agree and I lied that was not the last question the last question I'm gonna go around all panelists and have y'all answer as concisely as possible. What's one piece of advice you would give your first semester self? Um, I'm just gonna go in order of what I see on my screen. And first up is Malika. Try new things and don't overthink. I love that. Brucey? Um, Stress less about grades and declaring because it will all be okay in the end even if you don't declare emily okay mine's is a little bit more concrete but get a lanyard to put your key and your swipe card on people will make fun of you i remember michelle Mao. you made fun of me for having a lanyard in freshman year but it's really helpful so you don't lose anything but yeah get a lanyard mm-hmm <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Bridget. Yeah, I would say um, don't feel like you have to hit the ground running once you come. Like you can be chill for a month, like the first month. And afterwards as well. You can always be chill, right, Bridget? All right, Sophia. I would say not to overload on classes. Take it easy and like take the advice of people. Tarina. Um, I would say don't let the fear of failure hold you back from anything. Um, a lot of times you go into something and you're like, well, I've never tried that. And I don't think it's like right for me because I've never considered it. Just like try it. Like nothing's going to happen. Um, like Rusi said, everything's going to be okay in the end. And more often times than not, you're going to be glad that you did the thing. I agree. Kara? Uh, I would tell myself to get out of my dorm more. Ruby? Um, I would tell freshman year me not to take 6 U and A and 6 U and B at the same time. Oh, damn, you're one of those. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, could you speak more on that? I'm curious. Um, yeah, sure. I was really worried about declaring. I didn't think I'd be able to get a 3-3. So I took Data 8 and CS88 first semester. And then... I took 61A and 61B together because I had already taken the first half of 61A. It ended up being fine. Um, the amount of work was so ridiculous and I was just always crying over uh, 61B. So don't do that. It's it's so unnecessary. Just like study. D don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> good advice, good advice. All right, and mine would probably be that you have more power than you think in your life and in general, like in the department. I think because it's such a big school, you might think when you think something is um, not justified or something's not fair in the system, you're like, oh, but I'm just part of this 3,000 people large major, so I can't do anything. I've been here for three years and I've been able to talk to like authorities and I can tell you that you do have a voice, but you do have to go and seize the opportunity to make your voice heard when it is available. And feedback forms are usually the main way that happens. Um, yeah, so feel more empowered. All right, and that concludes our panel, but don't leave. I know when I say breakout rooms, some people will leave, but I really think this is, this is the key. This is the essence of um, what we're offering to you, which is, you know, chatting with some of these lovely ladies that you just heard from and many more that are just lurking in the chat. Um, so the way breakout rooms are going to work, if you go and try to join one now, you'll see they're already open. So it's going to be choose your own adventure breakout rooms. Also, I'm so happy no one has left. This is amazing. 
um, and they're by subject. So you can hop into any subject you want, leave any time, whatever you want. Um, and we're gonna come back again at 1.25. I will call everyone back at 1.25 PM. We'll do a conclusion and some people might, might even stay behind. But um, yeah, let's choose your own adventure and panelists and breakout room hosts, you can go into your breakout room now and chat away. Turn your video on if you can. And I will be in the main room for any technical difficulties.